Hey guys, Mark Howe here. So the cost to buy a 3D printer has come down dramatically, but so has the cost to build one. Now, if you just want to get into 3D printing straight away, and I don't blame you, then maybe buying a 3D printer might be what you want to do. But if you want to get into the wider world of CNC machining, laser cutting and engraving, or even motion control and robotics, then perhaps building a 3D printer may be the perfect place to start. When I started, I didn't know a lot about 3D printing until I found this. This was a Ratman 3.2 Touch from the early days of consumer 3D printing, which I picked up for $20 as being sold for parts. It was quite rough, so I thought I'd just keep the motors and bearings, but then I realized a 3D printer is really only just three things. The movie bits, the melty bits, and the brains to make them all work together. So I got the idea that I could just upgrade this one with all new parts, which were readily available and learn along the way. I didn't have high expectations, but I figured at the very least I could get it running just good enough to print parts for more modern designs, such as the Hypercube. That was the plan, but I guess I didn't really know how much this old 3D printer would surprise me. So if you do decide to build your own 3D printer, just know that a lot of CAD models for things like the extruder and hot end um, and linear bearings will be readily available on places like GrabCAD, Thingiverse, or Yegi. Just do some scratching around and you'll find them in no time. With these models, I could then figure out how I was going to adapt the new components to the old carriage, namely the hot end and extruder motor, but also the new heated bed, which would be made out of aluminium as opposed to perspex. I opted for aluminium as opposed to glass so that I could use an inductive bed sensor if I chose and I could have a more uniform temperature gradient throughout the entire heated bed. Plus I could also just use normal glue stick which is readily available to use the prints to adhere better. A lot of people think that the difficulty in designing and building their own CNC or 3D printer will come in the mechanical assembly. In reality, the hardest part is actually finding your specific machine's parameters and the settings that it likes to use. No two machines are going to be perfectly the same and therefore every firmware is going to need to be tweaked. Now sometimes you're going to have a case where you might think it's a firmware issue but it might actually be a wiring issue and sometimes you think it's a wiring issue and it might actually be a firmware issue. For instance, I thought I had a firmware pull-up issue with the, um, the Z probe. Turns out the probe itself was really just faulty. And also I thought I had firmware issues in that my screen wasn't working. Turns out on these boards the connectors were just placed the wrong way, so you have to flip them like you see here. Not forgetting to add this little bit of code to your firmware though. Once I'd gotten the thing to actually move, it was then time to overcome the next hurdle with 3D printing, which is getting all of your settings right. Luckily, I had lots of upgrades to print for the printer itself and an entire fleet of really awful looking benchies to keep me company for when the next set of problems cropped up. That's right, the MKS board stopped working. Now, quite honestly, if you're getting into 3D printing, do go for the ramps ecosystem. I really liked some of the features and the 32-bit board, but the ramps ecosystem was just far more fine-tuned. There was a lot more support and a lot more features. In fact, bed leveling was also way easier. So there you have it. The early prints still looked really horrible with that Z layer separation, but with copious amounts of super glue, I was able to get enough parts together to be able to upgrade the 3D printer and even turn it from direct drive to build an extruder. Now, would I do this again? You know what? I have to say, yes, I probably would. Think of it like getting a convertible as your first car. Though you'll learn to drive, you never really learn how to fix or work on cars. The same goes with 3D printers, but regardless of whether or not you already have a 3D printer or you're looking to get into 3D printing for the first time, I strongly suggest at some point building your own 3D printer. What better way to get into the world of CNC and from there you really can go on to much bigger things like CNC machining. So that's that. There's still lots of room for improvement on this particular printer, but let me know in the comments below whether you guys decided to buy or build a 3D printer and why. This has been Mark Howe, and thanks for watching.